Welcome to Vancouver Island Regional Library's Filmora Training, Episode 1. Starting at Filmora, Filmora Work Areas, and Activities tabs. When you first open Filmora, this is the screen you'll see. You can select the aspect ratio to be one of many different types. For general filming, 16 by 9 is preferred. If you have any projects on the go, you'll see them to the right of the screen in the project library. Select New Project to start new, or Open Project, where you can also open from a library. We'll select New Project for this training. Here is the Filmora project space. We'll review the first three windows here. Up here in the top left, this is where you can store media like video, images, or audio. You can drag and drop media from a desktop or a USB key, or you can also click to import media and browse your computer. A key thing to note for all imported media it must be held locally on your computer while you're working on the project. Filmora connects to the location of the media when working with it. So this means it either needs to live on your desktop or if you have media on a USB, you need to have the USB plugged in when using Filmora. Above the media area, you'll also see a tab to import media and recording options. We'll go over recording in another video. In the top right, we have the video preview screen. This is where we can view our video clips, transitions, elements, and more. And we can also choose sections of our clip to add to our project. We'll go over how to add clips in a later video. And here in the bottom, this is our timeline. This is where we'll actually add our clips, images, and music for our project. We'll go over specifics again in another video. At the top left of the screen, we have a few different options. The default is media, where we can add our own media from our computer. Next to this is the audio tab. Notice when we click this, the screen stays the same, except for our media area here. You'll notice the same change across the different tabs. Filmora comes with a host of different royalty-free music tracks that you can add to your project. This is good for videos such as crafts and how-tos, but not necessarily for a story time. You can either search by a theme by looking over here to the left, or you can also check out the music in the window here. We'll talk about choosing music in a later video. Songs with an underlying down arrow indicate that this track needs to be downloaded locally before you're able to preview or add the track to your project. To preview a song, Click the image from the window and you'll see it pop up in the preview window. Press play to test it out. To add this to your timeline, you can select the plus button in the middle of the image or drag and drop the song into the timeline like so. You'll see there is a separate line for music here. Next, we have titles. This is useful for noting a person's name or other important information that you want to convey to your audience, like a list of materials for a craft. Titles with the generic video preview indicate that this title will go over your video. Here's an example. Titles with more color can be thought of as a PowerPoint slide. Something like this.
There are suggestions that you can select from the left-hand side as well. You can change the font size, type, and color of titles, but you may be limited in where on the screen a title appears. Like with our music, click the plus sign or drag and drop the title into the timeline. The next window is Transitions. Transitions can be used to segue from one section to the next, like with a title screen or to cover cuts. There are lots of suggestions again on the left hand side here to choose from. You can also select from the window here to see what they'll look like. While there are lots of options, it's generally better to go with something simple like dissolve or fade. Much like PowerPoint transitions, it can be too distracting and unprofessional if you go a little too wild. Like before, click the plus sign or drag and drop the image into the project. The Effects tab covers filters and overlays for your video. You might use this to achieve a certain effect, such as for a flashback or dramatic emphasis. We can see what that might look like here. Again, press the plus sign or drag and drop it into the timeline to add it to the project. The Elements tab provides shapes and items to add to your project. These can be resized and placed wherever you'd like on the video screen. Generally, these are best used for emphasis. You can see what it'll look like in the video previewer. As before, click the plus sign or drag and drop it into the timeline. Lastly, we have the split screen tab. This is where we can make a collage of several images. You might use this to showcase different views of a craft, show different books, or maybe summarize points using images. You can see an example here. As before, you can click the plus sign, it's in a slightly different position now, or drag and drop the image into the timeline to add it. We also have the following options at the very top of the left hand side of the screen. File, create new projects, import media, save projects, settings, and more. Edit, similar to edit features in the word processing document. Tools. Sort and group imported files. The options here will be relative to whatever is selected within the project, so you might see different options later on. View. Adjusting how you view your video, as well as pausing and editing different options. Exporting is for quick export options. And help. This is the Filmora Support Center. Now that we know where to find different features for our project, we can get started with actually creating our project. When we start editing, we'll see more features depending on what we want to do with our footage. If you need more information about any of the features or about the project space, check out Filmora's training on specific aspects of these features.